Gafalola Adoa, Gafa Macalesani Nunumiti Farta King, Akimbe Kubarechani. On the night of June the 29th, 2020, the body of the hugely popular Ethiopian singer and activist Hachalu Hundeso was found in a suburb of the capital, Addis Ababa. <laughs> As news reports of his killing emerged, thousands came out onto the streets in an outpouring of grief. Thousands are angry in Ethiopia. They want justice for the murder of Hachalu Hundessa. Yes, and he was a very, very popular young singer, but also an activist. Hachalu, who raised public grievances in his songs, was shot dead on Sunday. Hachalu Hundessa! And Ethiopians living across the worldwide diaspora were stunned by news of the killing of the man they regarded as their hero. This is his widow and childhood sweetheart, Fantu de Monsieur. Who or what was behind the assassination of one of Africa's most popular singers? Hachalu was an Oromo, a member of Ethiopia's largest ethnicity. His songs were about peace and justice for the Oromo people. He had a huge and passionate following among the Romos of all ages. If I had to describe Hachalu in three words, I would choose a fearless, a loving, and passionate. A brave, inspirational musician. Courageous, humble and talented. He was a legend. Selfless and inspirational. He is a liberation hero, an artist and a role model to millions. The legacy that Hachalu left is one of activism that's centered on embracing each other. How can we love each other? How can we show up for our people and our, our, our heritage and still stand for what is right? Something about Hachalu spoke to the youth. He was the cornerstone of like being proud to be a Romo. That was one of the most troubling things growing up. Just knowing that you're Oromo, you don't have to claim anything else to be accepted. And so having that kind of person targeted and taken away from us is like a, a knife in the back. The reasons for Hachalu's murder and who was behind it remain a mystery. But many Oromos believe Hachalu's killing has everything to do with the state of Ethiopia today. Through his songs, Hachalu kept alive the memory of historical injustices committed against the Oromo peoples. We think of Hachalu, the son of the nation. Whether you're Christian, Waqifata, or Muslim, or you're from the east or south or north, he saw it as one people. Our history is not documented in a way that we can learn from. So through our history, through his songs, he teach all of our histories together in a way that reminded us of what we have been through to endure and persevere and still be here continuing this fight. In the 19th century, King Menelik II of the Amhara Shoah Kingdom 
moved south. It conquered the huge area that more or less covers Ethiopia today. Old Oromo place names were erased. Finfinni was renamed Addis Ababa, meaning new flower in Amharic. The Tulama Oromos had lived here. Huge numbers of them were expelled from their ancestral lands. With the loss of their lands came the loss of their livelihoods and erosion of their traditions. Successive generations were forced through economic need to migrate to the city. Achalu made it his job to remind his Aroma audience of what had been taken from them. Hachalu captured the Oromo experience of separation and violent ejection from their homelands in his powerful 2015 song, Malanjira. That is a song that was dedicated to dismantling of Oromo from Central Oromia, the Tulama Oromos from Finfinne, 1886 by Mudalek, after he invaded Oromia. Him making that the seat of his capital actually led to the extermination of a lot of Oromo families. sang about the pain and suffering of Oromo and also the aspirations of Oromo, which is to be a free nation that can decide their destiny. His empire state complete, Menelik declared himself emperor over the many peoples and nations he defeated. Some periodically clashed with the central power. Being the most numerical, with vast, strategically important lands, the Oromos were especially feared as potential rivals to be kept down. The legacy continues to this day. Although Ethiopia's federal state is now organized along ethnic and linguistic lines, the real power remains in the capital, established as an administrative center in the heart of Oromia. Today, the Oromo peoples form around a third of Ethiopia's population. But the same unequal power dynamic remains in place. Shows of Oromo culture and identity risk being savagely put down. Hachalu sang of how this treatment flies in the face of Oromo traditions. He tried to reflect the stories of the Oromo people throughout history to appreciate the heritage that we have that's been passed down to us. He sings not only about the topography of Oromia, but also the inclusiveness of the Oromo society and the openness of Oromo society and uh, the generosity of Oromo society. You know, Oromos are probably the third largest ethno-national group in Africa. Uh, there is uh, no historical reasons why we're so large. Partly because in times of war, Oromos don't um, hurt uh, the vulnerable, the children, the women. And because of their war rules that they follow, even at the time of war, they're able to mend peace. Uh, whereas, you know, if you uh, just to suppose that with uh, you know our neighbors from the north, even if you submit, they will destroy you. That that is basically why the Oromos can actually create peace after the war. Oromiatiya is what he sings, and uh, it's it's a beautiful melody, uh, powerful lyrics, and deep meanings that he articulated in that song. His lyrics are complex. Um, the topics that he discusses are things our parents heard from through oral tradition. Dr. Bonnie Holcomb has made a lifelong study of the culture and history of the Oromo peoples and the suffering of generations of them, both inside and outside of Ethiopia. 
they had been raised and their parents also to be ashamed of, to face insults and denigration, to watch their heritage become dismantled and replaced to the point where they didn't have any connection to it. But they still had the language. So when Hachalu, as Ali Bira had done before him, and other singers and artists had done before them, provided insight into what the Oromo way of life offers, it resonated. <laughs> This is Ambo, a small spa town in Oromia, to the west of Addis Ababa, where Hachalu was born. The local high school which he attended is reputed to be one of the country's best. In 2003, when students from the school and university staged a peaceful protest, the authorities opened fire on the unarmed teenagers, killing five and injuring many more. Hachalu was just 17 when he and scores of his fellow students were thrown into Ambo's notorious Karchale prison. Here they were kept in harsh and overcrowded conditions, along with ordinary criminals and political prisoners. Hachalu remained here for five years, with no criminal charges ever placed against him. Despite the conditions, Hachalu made use of his time behind bars. He became increasingly politicized, learning Ethiopia's history and its rule by emperors and autocrats. He began to explore the wealth of his Oromo heritage, and it was here that he began writing songs. He talked about sharpening his skill to speak in different ways while he was in jail, and he came out being this storyteller, this oracle, able to awaken a sense of pride in all of us. In jail, Hachalu learned to draw inspiration from Oromo traditions and wisdom. He poured everything he learned here into his songs. It's part of an Oromo knowledge tradition that he discovered when he was in prison, where he elaborated and, and had a deep, ongoing engagement with when he was in prison and came to honor and begin to develop it and form his genius around it. Within a year of being freed, Hachalu released his first album. He called it Sanya Muti, the title meaning royalty. Hachalu claimed he'd had no idea of how to write lyrics and melodies until he was put behind bars. And when he came out and stood in public places and began to stand in his truth, which was that truth of the history that he knew and the... Um, knowledge base, which I would call the Oromo epistemology, the underlying logic that Oromo wisdom brings to organizing people on the land and with each other. He served as a portal for his generation to access that knowledge. <laughs> They had not seen what we often call Oromuma at that level of a corpus of knowledge. Hachalu's songs resonated with the Oromo community and gave voice to their grievances. For many, he became a political symbol, although Hachalu played this down. I'm not a politician. Singing about the plight of my people doesn't make me a politician. But standing for a cause made politics impossible to avoid. With all of his genius, his most important gift to his own generation was to make them see, understand, and feel the legacy that they had been separated from. Cultural and religious celebrations are key markers in the life of all communities. But in Ethiopia, expressions of Oromo culture can be risky. Even the wearing of traditional Oromo clothes is liable to be seen as a sign of dissent, with arrest for having a political agenda. 
and being a catalyst for opposition. Romos who are influential in their communities are especially seen as a threat. Human rights organizations report that over the years, thousands of Romos, along with singers, writers, and poets, have been imprisoned merely on suspicion of opposing the government. Many simply gave up and fled the country. But Hachalu was not deterred. He remained in Ethiopia. He continued to speak out, giving voice to the Aroma cause. There are a lot more musicians that we can name. They make beautiful, beautiful music, but it's about business. But for him, it was not just about business. This was his calling, and he used his talent, his platform, to um, advocate for greater good. In 2013, the government announced plans that would override Ethiopia's federal boundary laws. The plans would expand Addis Ababa into 10,000 square kilometers of Aromo territory. It would wipe out 36 Aromo towns and 17 Warudas or districts. For Aromos, this was akin to the historical taking of Finfinni all over again when 150 years ago, Manilik II took their lands to create his capital. Ethiopia, now a federal empire state, was further marginalizing the Oromos. When Oromos protested, they came under attack from the security forces. Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch criticized the pervasive abuse of the Oromo people under successive Ethiopian governments. Ethiopia's response to their reports was to expel both organizations. Amnesty and Human Rights Watch continued their work remotely. Amnesty's research resulted in a 2014 report entitled, Because I am a Romo. It found disproportionate numbers of Romos were either in jail or refugees. Most interviewed had been locked up without charge. 5,000 had been imprisoned for opposing or suspicion of opposing the government. The true number is believed to be far higher. That year, Hachalu released his second album. He called it Wa I Kenya, meaning Our Struggle. He gave a worldwide concert tour spanning Australia, the UK, the USA and Canada. The album was an instant success. A year later, the government confirmed its master plan to expand the territorial reach of Addis Ababa into the ancestral lands of the Oromos. In the following years, 
thousands of Romo protesters would be killed by the police and the army. Even high school students were not spared. But the protests only grew with farmers and townsfolk joining in. The 2015 release of Hachalu's song, Malanjira, came just as the government was preparing to implement its master plan for Addis Ababa. Malanjira roughly translates as, what existence is mine? Hachalu was interpreting current events through the lens of history. His song laments the loss of swathes of Aroma land when the capital, Addis Ababa, was created. The message resonated among Aromos, resisting displacement and marginalization. That song connects the 2015-2018 struggle about property, the rights of ownership of the Oromo on their own land, uh, and um, fighting against the expansion of Addis Ababa master plan. He connects genesis of the current Ethiopian state to the present day of Oromos continuously being displaced and dispossessed, their identities stripped, their cultures denigrated. He uplifted many, many people to fight for universal ideals of justice, equality, freedom, um, and democracy. Director and journalist Aman Sisa Ifa was a long-standing friend of Hachalu and his family. He directed the accompanying video. My favorite Hat Alu song is Malendra. Even though it sounds like a love song, there is a political message to it. And it's beautiful. That year saw protests against the master plan for Addis Ababa spread throughout Aromia. Ever greater numbers of young men taking to the streets became known as the Kaval. The name means young bachelor men. This was a non-violent grassroots movement 
with no official organization. The name Cairo caught on as the protests spread out from rural areas. And they also had Hachalu songs ringing in their ears. Among those who publicly supported them were influential figures such as the media executive, Jawa Mohammed. The Cairo were instrumental in spurring the protests against the planned seizures of Oromo lands into a sustained political movement. Hachalu was its most visible champion. He marched with them, he participated at their events, he encouraged them. He was very involved in the Aero movement, and so he had a huge impact. Meanwhile, Hachalu's song, Malanjira, became the anthem of the Oromo protests and revolution of 2014 to 18. The government pressed on with its plans to seize Oromo lands, and protests erupted in schools and universities across Oromia. In November 2015, when students at Haramaya University peacefully demonstrated, the army opened fire on them with live ammunition. At least 75 students were reported killed, with many more wounded. But the protest did not stop. And nor did the killing at the hands of the police and the army. In January 2016, the government finally abandoned its master plan for Addis. But all along, fundamental changes had been taking place. Far from suppressing them, the violence meted out on the young protesters had had the opposite effect. Oromo youth everywhere were engaging with their own language and culture. And it was happening against the soundtrack of Hachalu's songs. This pro-democracy, non-violent youth movement had his music playing in their ears while they were resisting one of the most repressive regimes in Africa. Hachalu's concert tours for the Oromo diaspora had been wildly popular connecting and inspiring them with the robo stories and proverbs, history and culture. The song reverberates in the hearts of the young men and women. He's someone who really opened my eyes about what's going on with my people. And he helped me be proud of who I am. He talked about the Oromo struggle throughout his songs. He was very poetic about it. Through his lyrics is where he identified and he described what our people were going through. I grew up in an Oromo home where, you know, he spoke the language and everything, but I never understood what it was to be Oromo. How he sung about his people made me want to learn more about my culture and do the best to fight for my people. He's been the bridge of cultural integration. He sensitized. At no one point were Oromo community sensitized to stand up for their right, other than when Hajalu did it in a song. Sometimes it's hard for you to say, I am an Oromo. He took us to a place when everybody now is openly saying, I am an Oromo. Eritrea is the most important religious festival in the Oromo calendar. It's the traditional Thanksgiving for the end of the rains and the harvest. In October 2016, over a million Oromos converged to celebrate Eritrea at Bishoftu on the shores of the sacred lake Hasadi. When some people chanted anti-government slogans, the police opened fire with live ammunition and launched tear gas grenades directly into the crowd. In the inevitable stampede that followed, hundreds lost their lives. 
Oromos had for years defended their ancestral lands against the Finfinni master plan. But this was a turning point. Their cause had now progressed from merely seeking inclusion to a call for real change. Hachalu songs drove that call. He offered Oromo youth everywhere, both on the land and in urban areas, a vision for a future that reconnected them with knowledge and values from their past. A different way of being Ethiopian. This was barely noticed or understood by outsiders. But fearing the power of an Oromo awakening, the government declared a state of emergency. They swiftly imprisoned opposition leaders and their supporters, but they failed to bury the call for change. And all over Aromia, Hachalu's lyrics continued to inspire those calls. By now, Hachalu described his work in a more political way. You can't stand outside of politics, even if you play no direct role in it. If I'm not a politician, I still play my part through my work. Through 2017, a conflict between Oromos and Ethiopian Somalis in the east of the country displaced 700,000 from both groups. Hachalu visited the displaced. He gave a benefit concert at the capital's huge Millennium Hall. Leading politicians, including the future Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed, were there. Hachalu was undaunted. He spoke directly to the politicians and his Aroma audience. He impressed me really in the Millennium Hall. He was daring and tell the officials over there was not right what's going on. Irga achalu wal tajirati dabar susan. Kam nimbarba neojirati achalu amud isu. Irga ufegaru achalu wango chuka bo achalu kofaf isu. Then he went to the stage. And then we hear what he was singing. He used that stage to advocate for our people who were being displaced uh, in millions. That impressed me and I saw myself in this hero, this big artist. When I was a young fellow, the spirit I have. And Ajalu spoke to the power and he spoke the pain of the people. He was a gift from God to us. By 2018, the ethnic conflict in the Somali region was uprooting ever greater numbers. Ethiopia now had 1.4 million internally displaced people, 
more than any other country at that time. The fact was barely noted in international media. But once again, Hachalu stepped in. That June, he performed again at the Millennium Hall. This time, the Eritrean president and the newly installed prime minister, Abiy Ahmed, were there. Despite appearances, the change of government had actually changed very little for the Oromos. Achalu had been receiving death threats, but remained undaunted. The last interview that he gave, knowing the consequences, knowing that the enemy is pursuing him, Hachalu did not back down. He woke up to the reality of the fake change that came about, the hijacked transition that we experienced. The new Prime Minister, Abi Ahmed, had looked the part and promised the change Oromos demanded. World media soon latched on to a high-profile freeing up of civil liberties. Political prisoners were released and banned political groups legalized. Ethiopia's prime minister announced he would release many prominent dissident politicians. The leader of the Oromo Federalist Party had been arrested after returning from a visit to Brussels a year ago. If it is real and honest, we are for it. Abiy Ahmed made peace with Eritrea and the Nobel Committee awarded him the Peace Prize. But as opposition leaders and foreign journalists had warned, all was not as it seemed. Amnesty International and other observers warned that a few high-profile releases will not be enough. Thousands of prisoners of conscience are still in jail, accused or prosecuted for protesting against the government. The appearance of liberal values, human rights, reconciliation and democracy was to be short-lived. Far from seeking consensus, the government began to promote the old, hard-line Ethiopia First nationalism. On the 29th of June 2020, one week after his television interview, Hachalu's lifeless body was found in a car on the outskirts of Addis Ababa. It's not known who was behind the killing. Few details were released. News of Hachalu's killing sent shockwaves throughout Oromia and Oromo communities across the world. Hachalu Hundesen and his shooting has sparked unrest. Enraged youths burned tires in the capital and took to the streets in other cities. The killing has sparked a wave of protests that have left at least 80 people dead. Unrest spreading through the heartlands of Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed's support. As mourners poured onto the streets to express their grief, hundreds died. Once again, at the hands of the police and the army. It was as if every Oromo household lost an individual member of their family. And at the same time, 
Haj Ali's assassination triggered an age-old trauma for the Oromo. Every time there is a member of the Oromo community who inspires uh, a sense of hope, a sense of uprightness, and a sense of dignity, they're murdered. From that moment, 3 a.m. until 6 p.m. the next day, I just couldn't talk to no one, not to my wife, not to no one. I thought it must be a dream, this one. It's not a true. The legacy he left is universal, international. He's a hero, he's a brave man, and his death that like 50 million or more been stabbed from the back. Stabbed. We've been stabbed from the back. We are alive, but our hero gone. Minnesota's Oromo community won justice after a popular... Across the diaspora, Oromo youth came out onto the streets. A group of protesters closed a stretch of I-94 in St. Paul. The killing of a popular singer and activist has led to unrest in Ethiopia, and those calls for justice are being echoed here in Minnesota. We are asking Congress and we're asking the world to please step in and stop the human rights violation. In Ethiopia, the government blocked internet access along with news channels. Now, the Prime Minister in Ethiopia has called for calm, saying that there was going to be a full investigation into this shooting, but the details have been murky, and that's because there has been an internet outage across the country. Influential Oromos, including Bekele Gerba and Jawa Mohammed, leading members of the Oromo Federalist Congress Party, were rounded up and jailed. They knew people were going to react. They used his death to round up all the influential individuals just as an excuse. The crackdown on the press only served to draw further international media scrutiny. Since the murder of Hachalu Hundesa, Abi's administration has put several opposition politicians behind bars for allegedly inciting protests. Amidst the chaos, Hachalu's music continues to ring true for many Oromos. Critics say that the violence was perpetrated by state elements and anti-federalist forces to create the impression that it's the existing federal system that causes division. But disagreements over the future direction of the country led to war with Tigray, and with it, real fears that the country may unravel. More recent events raise a fundamental question for Oromos and all Ethiopians. What kind of state do they want? Should Ethiopia be a unitary, centralized state, more in line with the 19th century empire? Or should it become a looser federation, with power devolved to its various peoples? Some of us were hoping we can democratize Ethiopia and have improved federalism. Today we know those things will not deliver us. Through his art, Achalu had envisioned a fairer, more democratic society. Long after his death, his words and music remain all the more pertinent for Oromos and Ethiopia's diverse peoples. If people can separate Hachalo's role as a transmitter from the messages and realize that they still have access to that, they can come to honor it as one of the world's great spiritual and knowledge traditions, the Oromo the Kush heritage. It's a tradition of deliberative democracy, which is grounded in a search for truth. The truth is available through all aspects of the society and not held at the top. There's a story of the hope that Hachalu kept alive by keeping the focus on what is to be protected, what is to be regained, what is to be 
held up as a genuine alternative on the face of the earth for how to live, how to bring forth a tradition that's an earth care tradition that compares human beings' relation to the land as the relation between two people who are in a lover's embrace and gaining life and, and energy and sustenance from one another. And to be separated is to face extinction. Hachala showed a way to appreciate the great Oromo heritage and for that he has to be celebrated. <laughs>